People see you, but do they really see you? How do you own your own brand so you can truly step into your story? Hang out with us today on episode 7 as we unpack this. What's happening, people? I'm Robert Kennedy the Third, RK3. That's me, and I'm so doggone glad you're here. Because I missed you. I did. I missed you so bad. I almost went into withdrawal. I was twitching and itching my neck. <laughs> okay, maybe I won't go that far because that may be scary for some of you. But I'm just I'm just happy you're here. Is that good? <laughs> Alright, here we go. In our last episode. We talked about five amazing ways you can outsource your success. If you didn't get a chance to listen, go back to episode six of the podcast. Listen, then choose what you need to work on. I'm working on number four. What's number four, you ask? (laughs) Listen to the episode and find out. Yes, I'm keeping you in suspense. Go ahead and listen. All right. Today's episode is going to be a great one because it deals with owning who you are. Owning your strengths, your gifts, your path, because you can only truly fly when you own your story. That's right. And speaking of owning, I want to answer a question that came in. This question says, how can I have better body language during my presentations? I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, but I'm told by my bo- I'm told my body language appears disconnected. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Help. And they wrote help with four P's, so you know they're serious. Well, listen, body language is critical. You may have heard about the study done by Albert Morabian in the book Silent Messages, where messages where he says that 55% of what influences your audience is simply the visual. What they can see from you as, as you enter the stage or as you enter the room is critical, and you can win them over quickly with your body language or... You can cause them to zone out even more quickly. I remember one of my first public speaking experiences. I went up to the lectern at the front of the room and and I spoke. I'd spent several days preparing for this talk and now here I was delivering it. But as I spoke, I looked out into the audience and all I could see were zombies with, with these blank looks staring back at me. And that made me even more nervous than I already was. All I could do was look away and focus on my notes because I was becoming more and more consumed by what the audience was thinking. And and afterwards, the organizer said to me, good message, but you seem so nervous. Wow. So I decided that the next time I would just focus on my notes and not worry about the people. (laughs) But that's horrible advice. That's a horrible approach. You see, too often... We go into a situation, focus so heavily on our message that we forget about the people and connecting with them. And the truth is, while people expect a message, they're impacted much more by you and how you deliver that message. So if they're impacted more by the male person than by the male, why don't we focus on them first? Find out who they are and then give them what they need. Think about it like, Being invited to a potluck, right? Somebody invites you to a potluck and you decide to bring a well-cooked steak. But you find out that the host and everyone else there is vegan. What? Now you feel crazy when all it took was asking a couple of questions. So let me answer yours. If someone says you appear disconnected, ask questions. Okay, I'm interested in learning and being better. So what would you like to see differently? How can I do that differently? What are some of the things that signal to you that I'm disconnected? And now you've engaged them in conversation, right? And so they can tell you what they see. And then now you have something to decide if you agree with and work on. So many times 
we hear something is wrong and, and we go to try and figure it out on our own when the person giving the feedback quite often has great information that would help us give them exactly what they need. So rather than figuring it out, ask them, determine if the feedback is valuable and then practice it. You have a great message, but your first priority is to connect with the people who will hear the message. So let me know if that's helpful. If you have any additional questions, be sure to send them over to me at podcast at robertkennedy3.com. Let's also hang out together over at the Speak Right Now community on Facebook. I want to share a quick resource today. I want you to read this book, Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graciosi. Mm, it's a wow read. You know those books, the ones that make you say, wow, when you read them, right? There's an activity in there called the seven levels deep exercise. I want you to read it, do that exercise, and then come back and tell me how it went, okay? Will you do that for me? Yes, you will. Okay, today, 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 my goodness, my guest is the marketing maven herself, Heather Havenwood. Heather lives and breathes what she preaches, We had a great conversation about branding yourself and telling your story. Heather's got a story. Let's tell it. We are here rocking and rolling today with another awesome, phenomenal, phenomenacious. I made that word up, but that's okay. It's going to be a part of the lexicon really soon. I'm trademarking it. Heather Havenwood. How are you doing today, Heather? I'm kicking it. I'm kicking it over here in Austin, Texas. I am doing yeah. very well. If you're on the video, you can see us. If not the audio, I got my uh, cup that says sassy. And then behind <laughs> me, I got my pink and black and I have my shirt on that says being the boss is sexy. So I'm, I'm kicking it. I'm ready to sparkle. Heather, tell me a little bit about your brand. I think the first thing that I noticed when I came on was yeah. you had those hot pink fuchsia <laughs> cabinets. <laughs> In the back of you, and, and you, get, you, know, you got the pink shirt, and you got the sassy cup. Tell me a little bit about that brand. It's called Owning It. It's called Owning Your Brand, you know? Yeah. Um, own it, right? So if you walk into, like, a Google or something, you know you're in Google because of, like, all this stuff. You're, like, you're clear. You know where you're at, right? And I, I guess for me, when my business, I want to feel like if someone's coming into my space, which is video, or myself, I walk into my space, I want to feel like this is my business. I want to own it. And so, yes, I wear a uniform every day, which when I was in uh, high, when I was in college and I went to, I worked as a waitress and you right. know, people in restaurant, we had to wear a uniform and I hated it. I hated it, hated it, hated it. And now I wear a uniform every day to myself because the reason it is because it's like, it's like putting on, we're from home, right? So it's putting on my business attire. Now my, my, I, I hate, I, I don't wear heels and I don't wear like a dress or anything, but I wear a shirt. This is being the boss of sexy. I have like 15 of them. Right buy one of you so shoes and I'm, you know, just wearing, you know, whatever. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's subconscious. Like everything I do is subconscious from that perspective. I got to own it. You got to own your own brand. I love it. People think about branding as this thing that you do when everybody else is looking, what is the thing that you want people to see? What is the thing that you want people to associate with you? But you're saying, listen, you got to own that thing from the time it, the clock hits four Oh one and you wake up, you step into your brand, whether people are looking or not. So I'm in Texas. This is going to another level. So I'm in Texas and here in Texas, you can buy uh, for $750, you can buy your own license plate, not, you know, name and you can buy whatever you want. You can make it up. Right. right. And uh, the sexy boss is available. And I've been like holding it for like two years. I haven't actually got it on my car because my car is a white Lexus and I right. wanted it pink and black sexy boss. And I thought this would be awesome, but I, I'm kind of hesitant because I drive really freaking fast. (laughs) So I'm part of these like, I don't want to be that noticeable to the cops. You're like, there goes the sexy boss. So let's go get her. So I'm like, maybe I should like step that back. But um, yeah, you got to own it on every level. So yes, I'm holding sexy boss in Texas license plate. You cannot get it. I have it. Wow. Yeah. So Tell me a little bit about your start here. We're talking to speakers and a lot of times speakers, they don't, we don't always know what drove them to share their story or, or their message with the world. Where did you start? What made you start? What made you decide that, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do and this is how I need to do it? 
So it's a great, it's a great question. I started in corporate world like most people. I'm not going to tell you that boring story, but the, the big part of the sparkle is I started in the speaking industry on accident. I got fired from a corporate job at the top, the top of the height of my job. I did very well for them and I got fired, which was always really weird. But right. I got thrown into the speaking business on accident. I started traveling the country with real estate investor speakers back in 2001 and started to learn this industry called speaking. It's a whole like world of speaking, you know, and I got thrown into that quite quickly. And, and, and what I learned is there's two levels of speakers. We were kind of talking when they call in the green room about it is that usually when women get into speaking, they want to be an advocate for something. There's something that's happened in their life and they're like, I want to make a difference on the planet. They want to advocate for, and by the way, I want to make money, right? There's usually that concept. In my experience with, um, with men, and I, I traveled with all men, most of the speaking I worked with and worked for speakers and behind the scenes, it was all men. And what I realized with men is like they were speaking to make money. And if they uh, made a difference on the planet, that'd be cool. Right. That, I'm generalizing, but that's, that's even if the, the most powerful ones, and I can name some big names, they still had that concept in the back of their head. And it makes a big difference because, yes, they did make a difference on the planet. Yes, they did move the needle. But if you understand how the industry works and speaking and self, you have to have that kind of what I call a crossover mindset, right. which the crossover mindset, it's not about the resume. It's about the story. And what does the story do? The story of you or whoever, your client or your, your um, student, whatnot, it's got to move the needle in such a way it's moving people from where they're sitting to another, another action, right? And in that action usually has something to do with money around that, right? Which is an action towards something. So that's what the speaking industry is really about. It's about movement. It's about sharing your personal story or another person's story, client or student, or just about the person such that the people in the audience who are listening are making some kind of action move, right? Right. And it's very different than TV. So let's just take Oprah for a second. Like I, I've been on, on a, on a stint of Oprah. I go on these like stints of Oprah. Like I disappear from her for years and then like all of a sudden I'm like watching everything. So I'm on this with Oprah right now. Like what the stint she's on is, is pure information slash entertainment, right? right. Such that people are moved from the, from it and they may or may not take an action. They can sit passively and listen and be entertained and feel, but there isn't an action versus the speaking industry. Like you and I kind of ran, right? Is that if I'm speaking somewhere, I'm either a getting paid to sit to, to entertain and give information or B no one paid my way. I paid my way and I have to share my story in such a way to get people to move and take an action. Like right now, I'm like, you're not paying me to be here. I'm not paying you. Right. So this is me giving information, but my intention, right. My intention is such that they're like, they either love me or hate me. Either one is fine. As long as there's a choice in there. And then they go towards my site and then they click on something and they get on my list. There's an action I want them to take. Right. So, and so, so to answer your question, how I got involved with this was in sales and moved into speaking as an afterthought and mm-hmm. realize all it is, is the human psychology of getting people to move and take an action. Right. So you, you're, you're in this industry and what if you feel like, your story, you met, you mentioned story just now. What if you feel like your story is boring as heck, right? Because I, I have a lot of people in some of my communities that the reason that they don't take the action, the reason that they don't tell their stories is because, oh my gosh, I wasn't in war. I didn't have my arm cut off. I didn't, I, I, I didn't have pneumonia. I didn't have these things. And I don't have these dramatic stories to tell. How does somebody then share a story that you already think is, yeah, man, and move people to action? That's a great question. I can, I remember in Florida, I was talking to, uh, I used to, what I used to do is I used to consult speakers around the country in their speaking. Right. So I would be the one consulting them on their speaking and in their closing ratio. Okay. So I remember talking to this one guy and he had this dramatic story that the guy must die three times or something like really (laughs) dramatic. And I'm like, holy cow, like that's so insane. You know, I'm like, you gotta share the story, but here is the negative of it, which sounds weird, is that it's so dramatic. Right. So over the top that people can't 
relate. Mm. Because like the guy had like a near, uh, no kidding, like a near death experience multiple times, right? The guy should be speaking. So it was kind of like for the everyday person over here, like, wow, but it's not going to move somebody. Right. Because like versus my story or some of the people I know in consulting is like, I wanted them to tell what they call the boring story, Mm. the story they're sitting there and they're watching TV and they really super like realized they're no longer in love with their spouse. And like, what the hell do they do about that? Wow. Communication, motivation, leadership, and more. You're listening to the RK3 show. Okay, that, you know, not, oh my God, I'm sitting there and my daughter called now, she's got cancer. Like, yes, is that dramatic? Yes. And not everyone can like relate. It's more like a feel sorry for. And right. that's, not the, that's not what people want to hear. People want to understand, you're like me. You go through everyday crap every day and you've moved through it and you're better off. Wow. Right? So when I tell people, one, people don't want to hear a resume. No one cares if you have 5,000 degrees. Congratulations to you. You have a, bit, a lot of debt. <laughs> Congratulations. But Thank what you. people want to hear is, why are you a, a chiropractor? Why are you a vet? Why are you on this stage right now speaking? What are you doing here? Like, that's what people want to understand, right? Wow. So, and I have a book out called Power Guesting where I basically teach people how do you share your personal story on podcasting. I think that podcasting is a great way to do it because you know, I'm not in front of a room of 10,000 people. I didn't have to travel. Like there's a lower hanging fruit that I can share my story and other people can too without such a huge cost, right? So I think that everyone should be able to do it. And no matter if you're a vet, chiropractor, dentist, I mean, when's the last time you went to your dentist and, and said before he opened your mouth, you're like, yo, dentist, why are you a dentist? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Just like, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. But I promise you, before you got in the door, you probably thought it through. You know, maybe you got referrals or, oh, he's such a nice guy or nice girl. Oh, he helped me out. He's so sweet. He's so nice. He really explained something to me. Boom. That's a personal story. So I think people want to understand pers- what, why they're doing what the heck they're doing. And it doesn't have to be this big drama, you know? Wow. I don't think so, it has to be big drama. So let's dive into that book just for a second here. So you've got power guesting. As a speaker, what are the things that I need to then be looking for in order to tell my story effectively on podcast? Do I just randomly go out and get a podcast directory, say, hey, you know, what 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 do I do as a speaker? Okay, so there's a couple of things. So I'm gonna speak from a guest. Like so I'm a guest, right? I'm yep. not speaking from creating a show. It's a very different conversation. Yep. So um and how this got started was I uh just to give you some background. So I I started my own show back in 2013. It's called it's called it's in the it's called the sexy boss show, but it's in the graveyard of, of iTunes. It's, it's like failed miserably. Just, <laughs> just you know, it was like that. Story. it barely like got a you know, just like that. So Anyway, so I thought podcasting is stupid. <laughs> so I, it failed. Right. Yep. So um, then about 2015, a friend of mine reached out to me and go, hey, you want to be on my show? And I'm like, I don't know, sure. So I get the show and we just had this great chat. And he basically was asking all these questions about what I do for my business. And I was like just spewing. And the next thing I know, I get a $5,000 coaching client. Someone reached out to me from the show. And I thought, huh, 30 minutes of just chit-chatting, $5,000. Let me do that again, right? So that's kind of where I went in my head. So I started focusing on being a guest and I did over 250 shows. Wow. Right? Not including this one. So I focused on what does it mean to be a great guest? How do my, my job is to add value to you and add value to your people. This is your, I'm a guest in your home, literally. Like that's my job is to honor your people and honor them. Right. That's my job. And so I thought, well, this is what everyone's doing. I kept getting asked to come back and good things were happening. And then I, then I flipped the mic as I call it. And I started my own show and I realized not everyone's great as a guest. Right. (laughs) I realized that some people are like boring, you know, (laughs) Bueller, Bueller. (laughs) Bueller, are you there? Hello? Yeah. (laughs) Is that the question? Okay. So, I mean, that's what I realized is that not everyone knows how to share a personal, their personal story. And sometimes I would get people that I knew they were awesome. Like I knew them, like you're rocking. Oh my God, you're so smart. Come on my show. And then they get in front of the mic. They're like, are we done? Because that's all I got. You know? And I'm like, what? 
what's right. wrong? With you? So I realized that when we have a message, right, or we have something we want to give, our word expertise, that was a big thing for a while, expertise. When right. we have that, we want to understand it's more about the journey and the hero's journey. If you really right. want to get down this, you can definitely go down and do some more research on the hero's journey. But it's the hero's journey. And the hero's journey doesn't have to be this dramatic, like you got cancer and you overcame it kind of thing. It can really be, how did you find your path? Right. What are the things you came up against? Mental things, external things, personal things you bumped up against that are everyday occurrences that people can relate to. The boss that told you you're an idiot, the, the ex-boyfriend who said you're stupid, and then you overcame. Like, these are things that people can like get, right? right. Like, oh, I've been there. Like, you know. So that's what people want to hear in personal story. And that's what people connect with. It's like, I can understand her. I can understand what she's gone through or him or her. And so that's what people can take away from is I can really relate to that. And then I want to hear her advice or hear their expertise. And so that's the right. direct. So where do people get the book? Where do they find the information about you? I know you've got a site, sexybossinc.com. Wow. Go, go ahead. Tell me a little bit about yeah. where they connect. So heatherhavenwood.com, they can check that out. Um, okay. And if you're interested in having a conversation with me, they can go to coachwithheather.com, coachwithheather.com. Right. Um, if they just want the book, they can go to Amazon, type in Heather Havenwood, Heather Havenwood, and they'll be see Power Guesting. Awesome. So it's, it's, really for, it's really for speakers, authors, coaches, experts, business owners that want to know how. How do I share my message? And then the other part that I talk about, which is so apparent, is how do I ask people to come to your party, I call it. So this is your party. I'm a guest, yeah. right? And we were connected. We were probably connected in multiple ways. But I had to some level ask you, can I come to your party? You know, right. and that's very counterintuitive for people. Right. So one last question here before we wrap. How do people typically respond to the phrase or the term sexy boss? Uh, I just had this conversation with, with my pet. <laughs> like, <laughs> with with your pet? Was, yeah, she came to take care of my uh, dog who's next okay. to me and, uh, in house call. And she said something like, yeah, I didn't know what that email was. Sexy boss, Inc. And I, I, I go, yeah, it's, you know, she had to like, what is that? And I yeah. just had that conversation and, I told her, I said, you know, I had a conversation with the podcast guy um, last week. You know, we were going back and forth on, you know, confirming. And right. he said he had to like tell his wife, honey, the sexy boss email coming in. It's, it's a woman. I'm, I'm having a podcast. It's a podcast. We're having a podcast. I've never met her. Like he had to like do all this stuff. Like it's, uh, what is that? What's so right. crazy about that word? But here's what I understood. Here's why I say it is. Sexy boss means two things. There's two elements. Sexy is a woman owning who she is on every level and a feminine energy. And then boss yeah. is owning her air, all, all areas of her life. I absolutely love that. I know you did too. It's about owning who you are, owning your space, and then acting on that ownership. You are amazing. You are enough and you have something phenomenal to offer the world. The world functions without you, but it's so much better when you step into your true, authentic, unabashed self. Isn't it time you stopped hiding, sneaking around in plain sight? Isn't it time you stopped following the robotic path and just owned your story? My goodness, I want that for you. That's why I do this. That's why I actively seek out people who can help you do just that. And I want you to do it. Stop waiting until the time is just right and perfect. Because guess what? It's never going to be. Everything that's happening to you, I want you to think about it like this. If your life is a bucket and it's constantly being poured into, then after a while it will overflow and fall on the ground and go to waste. But if you connect a spigot to that and take cups to share with others or allow others to receive from it, then you will not only have more room to receive for yourself, but you will also contribute to the lives of others. That's purpose. That's the reason for your story. Listen, folks, it's been my doggone pleasure to hang out with you today. Thanks for listening. Remember to check the show notes for any resources we mentioned. Then tell somebody about the show. We are on Apple Podcast, used to be iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and ooh, Pandora. Yup, we're there too. If you have an idea for the show or questions, drop me a line at podcast at robertkennedy3.com. That's podcast at robertkennedy3.com. 
www.thebeanpodcast.com. And oh yeah, if you like the show, don't forget to leave a review or a comment wherever you listen. As we've been saying, everything that happens to you in your life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story, and your story deserves a stage. Hey, I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, and you've been listening to... The RK3.